Hello everyone. This is a video on connecting the mag, the bifuller magnetic coil uh, to the Spooky. And we're going to demonstrate connecting it um, not only the simple and straightforward way, but also using a Spooky Boost. And I have a Spooky Boost cable right here. This is a Spooky Boost. I'm sure you all you've seen that. I have a version 2, Spooky, Bo Spooky Boost version 2 that I don't think works properly. I'm having a problem uh, getting it to perform the simple function of combining uh, two waves. Um, so it could be uh, just a defect in this particular board or that it could have been a design flaw. I just don't really know. Um, it looks good, but there is a Spooky Boost version 3 out also, and I do not have one of those. So I can only really demonstrate using the Spooky Boost cable. And here it is. Um, I'm told that the other Spooky um, enhanced uh, units, uh, version 3, is supposed to be able to do everything that this can, and I think that's what they're selling now is Spooky Boost 3. So here we go. First thing we're going to do is take the two provided um, auxiliary, not really auxiliary, but two provided connecting cords that come with the Bifuller Mag coil and we're going to connect them up to channel 1 and channel 2 of the Spooky. And I have them channel 1 and I need to get an adapter and I have it now to channel 2. Alright, so there is um, three plugs. It really does not make a difference which one you plug the the, the coil, two male AC wall outlet type uh, connectors. Just plug one into each. There is no real polarity requirement here. And voila. So now the spooky coil, or the spooky function generator, is connected to the bifiller magnetic coil. And all that's necessary to run this is to put in a um, frequency in both channels, identical frequency into both, both channels of this coil, and to either invert sync one of them or not. If you invert sync, you will get in this particular connection mode you will get what is called a scalar wave and if you do not invert sync you will get just plain magnetic fields and we can demonstrate that I have the spooky right now manually set up to run 10,000 Hertz out of each channel I'm running a sine wave out of each channel and I have right now the invert sync. Now you're all familiar with the invert sync that's on the Spooky uh, software menu. And I have this manually set to do an invert sync. So if I press the go button, you can see the waveform on the scope in the back. And what that is doing is combining the two channels together and pumping them into the coil. In fact, it would probably be better for me to show you the actual two channels. There's channel one still connected and channel two is flying but we're not seeing anything. Why not? because my cable broke. That is why. I need to get another cable. I have one right here. That's what happened. My cable broke. Isn't that amazing? Let 
There we go. And let's match them up so they're both on the same wavelength, so to speak. Okay, so I said that I have the invert sync running. And I'm feeding in one signal into the coil um, normally. And on channel two, it's inverted, same frequency, going into the coil. And here's the image. And if I turn on my meter, which right now is set for magnetic field, the flicker was just the power surge, I get nothing. Because right now this coil is generating scalar waves. I have two 180 degree out of phase signals. They're bucking one another. And what that does basically is generate what they call a standing wave. And that standing wave effectively is a scalar wave. Alright, so with that said, I'm going to change the invert sync to just normal. Now right now we're only connecting the spooky with the two provided cables, that, uh, it's just the bifolar mag coil, with the two provided cable adapters. And I'm running it manually, but this would do the exact same thing if I was running it through software. And I'm going to change channel two to be a um, And there you go. So now you can see that I'm also now deflecting the meter because I'm no longer sending a, uh, doing a scalar wave. I'm doing a magnetic wave. And the closer I get, the more I'll peg that meter. And you can see that both of these wave patterns are in synchronous uh, with one, they're in sync with one another, and they're both going into the coil. That is the basic setup on how you connect up the bifolar mag with the provided two cable adapters when you have access to this coil. That's all there is to it. Now we're going to show you what a scalar, not a scalar wave, excuse me, what a spooky boost can do. And I put the spooky boost right here. And here we go. We're going to connect it up. I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to first stop everything. And I'm going to disconnect the coil from the spooky. Here's the two adapters. I'm just put them out of the way. I'm going to connect the get off the old connectors because I already have them here. Okay, the Spooky Boost now is connected to the Spooky. I've connected the red lead, it's got a red ring on it, to, uh, to channel one and the blue lead to channel two, and it, you can reverse them. It doesn't make a lot of difference for what I'm going to show you. But you'll notice now I only have one connector here, and I have two connectors coming out of the coil. How do I take these two connectors and get them to run off the spooky boost? I have two adapters that I've made. I have an adapter here, the one with the little red, um, bring it a little closer, with the three red uh, pieces of tape. Actually, that's each shrink. This will convert these two plugs to a scalar wave mode of operation to the spooky. I have another version and this one has black and this will allow me to connect these two outputs or inputs from the, these two right here shaking my hand with this adapter and you'll notice they're females. I'll be able to connect that to this right here and we will now be able to use this as a magnetic device. That's right. When you use the Spooky Boost cable, the original technique to take advantage of it was to have one of these cables and one of these cables, and depending what mode you wanted to operate. Did you want to operate scalar mode, or did you want to operate magnetic uh, field mode? We're going to operate magnetic field mode because we want to see the magnetic field here. So I'm going to connect 
<laughs> I'm watching the camera and I'm not aiming very well. The adapter, plug one end to one end, one end to the other end. And I have the spooky on, but if you remember, I had left it in two equal frequencies coming out. They were in sync with one another. But in order to run a single frequency out of this spooky boost, you have to do the same thing the software does. You have to turn on invert sync. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. My meter's already on. I'm going to go over here to channel 2. And voila. I have two signals coming out of the spooky. They are in one is inverted from the other. They are identical frequencies, identical amplitudes. And by the way, uh, you might have just out of curiosity, I'm only running 10 volts out of each one, so um, I'm only feeding in 20 volts to the coil. Uh, the whole advantage of using a spooky boost is, is that you have the potential in a sine wave mode with a zero offset to feed in twice that, roughly 40 volts. In reality, I've never seen 40 volts. I've seen 38, I think, was the highest I've ever saw. But that's all right. Um, and right now, I'm running this off a spooky boost with just 20 volts going into the coil, and it's running in magnetic mode. Now, if I connect up this cable here, you won't see anything because it'll look like a straight line because you have two phases completely uh, out of phase with one another, and they'll cancel running to the coil using this adapter. So there's no point in actually showing you that. But there is a point in showing you the bifuller mag scalar wave switch. Much easier than having two separate cables. And with a flick of a switch, you can have scalar mode or magnetic mode. With the switch pointing towards these two banana plug terminals, it is in scale, uh, magnetic mode. The middle position, it is nothing. It's disengaged. And in the lower position, it is now in scalar wave mode. So let's do that. Let's connect that up. I'm going to stop this. And I'm going to disconnect this adapter. Okay, so this adapter is now out of the picture. And what do I have to do now is I have to bring back one of the original adapters that I was using. And I need to plug that into the Spooky Boost. Plug the switch, the switch mechanism, right here, into the adapter. And you'll notice I have two female receptacles, one, two, and I now can plug in the coil. I have these taped together so I don't have wires all over the place. Alright, I'm going to turn on the frequency um, function generator, the Spooky 2. It is running. You can see it, but I have this switch turned off. If I turn the switch on, you'll notice that I just went into magnetic mode and the meter just started indicating its, its middle scale um, that I have a magnetic field. I go back to off, and I go down to scalar wave, and there's no magnetic field, but there is current being passed through the spooky boost. Okay, I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to put it in neutral, and I want you to see this wave pattern shrink a little bit. It'll get smaller when I put it in scalar wave. And I'm going to take it out and put it off in neutral. I'm going to put it back in scalar wave. 
And the reason why it's, it shrank a little bit is because there's current being sucked up through the whole mechanism, all the connections, into the coil. And I have, in this adapter here, I'll use this one right here, whoops. In this adapter here, there's a built-in 330 ohm resistor, so you can't short circuit the spooky. And, but there's a voltage dropped across that, and there's a little bit of load, and it's reflected in the amplitude on the scope. So when I'm running scalar mode, you can definitely see, if you had a scope connected up, that you're drawing current. I just turned it in neutral. Now watch when I turn it in magnetic mode. You see that, looking at, looking at the scope, you see that same little shrinking. In fact, I can make that a little more apparent by blowing up the scale a little bit. Turn on the power, and you can see that sine wave. So I'm, I'm sucking juice through, and I pay a little penalty. There's a little bit of voltage lo loss, uh, and I'm driving a magnetic field right now into the coil. And if I put it back to neutral, no current's going into the coil. If I go to scale the wave, you see that exact same thing. There's current going in here, but it's an entirely different wave pattern. So that is how simple it is to use the, um, the switch. And I really have come to become a believer in the spooky boost. Because let me show you something. I just put it in magnetic mode. I'm only running 10 volts. I'm only running 10 volts uh, per channel. And you can see I got a halfway deflection. I can't do this without using the Spooky Boost, but I'm going to double that voltage, and here we go. I'm going to go to my meter, and I'll pick channel 1, and I'll double the amplitude. Whoa, I'm going to have to turn my scale down here, my meter. So right now I've got channel 1 pumping in quite a bit more, uh, but channel 2 is still the same 10 volts. I'm going to go to channel 2 next and turn that up. Oh, excuse me. They both went up together. I had them in sync. I made a mistake. So at any rate, you can see now that I've got a much stronger signal on the meter. I can't get that kind of signal on this meter without using the Spooky Boost. The Spooky Boost gives me more power. So there's a definite advantage to having a Spooky Boost. Whether you use the Spooky Boost through the magnetic, um, bifolar magnetic uh, to scalar switch box here, or whether you use one of these adapters. I think it's more convenient having the box, uh, but you know, to each his own, because you might only always run magnetic waves. Let me say something about that. Magnetic waves work a lot better than scalar waves if you're right there. If you're right there and you're applying this to um, a person, yourself, or whatever, you can move this coil wherever you want, but you're right there. There's real waves coming right at you. Um, a scalar wave uh, requires a little bit more consideration, and that's for another video. All right, that's my presentation, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you very much, and have a very nice day.